Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 625. Testosterone replacement is the secret ingredient to reverse aging. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to talk about a secret ingredient that um, our researchers and medical profession does not tell women about why they age, why they feel terrible after age 40, why they, um, why we, I guess, um, but I don't have those symptoms anymore because I, I have the secret ingredient, but they even, um, they even deflect or, or um, mask the real, what's really going on between 40 and 50 by causing that to be called perimenopause. Now, menopause means you stop making eggs, you stop making estrogen, and that doesn't ever change. You enter menopause, you're never out of menopause. So that's what menopause is. Peri means around menopause. Menopause average age is around 51 as of the last time they, uh, they did the uh, research and counted people who were in menopause. And perimenopause starts after 40. So it isn't close to menopause. And menopause has to do with not making estrogen. Well, perimenopause has nothing to do with estrogen. Perimenopause is all the symptoms of low testosterone, not low estrogen, that you get after 40. The first hormone that leaves your body and is not made is testosterone. The second is progesterone. We've got plenty of estrogen after 40 into 50, and we've got no testosterone, we've got no progesterone, so we start bleeding, our uterus grows, our fibroids grow. We have all kinds of uh, uterine bleeding problems, or we have lots of, of uh, hysterectomies uh, to treat those problems. And then menopause happens after or average age 51. So we are, first of all, it's a secret because doctors are either don't know or they don't know how to replace testosterone, so they tell you it's just aging. Oh, honey, it's just aging. you got to put up with it. If men had this, if men had sleeplessness and, and lack of sexual um, drive, and if they, had, they were disorganized and they couldn't think, and they started gaining belly fat, and they started being um, crabby, and they also started having hot flashes, night sweats, dry vagina, painful intercourse. All of these things have to do with the initial lack of testosterone. And, they, and we as doctors were trained to say that's estrogen. Well, it's not. When you're 40 to 50, you got plenty of estrogen. You're still making eggs. You're still, you're still producing estrogen. And in fact, we have estrogen uh, abundance so much so that it, it causes our fibroids in our uterus to grow and it causes us to bleed heavily when we're having periods during that time. So they, when we ask doctors what to do or when, when I, for example, when I had my hysterectomy 20 years ago and when I, fa- I found my current, um, my current practice uh, was based on the fact that I had no hormones I got all the symptoms right away after my hysterectomy. I was miserable and I went to people who I thought knew something about hormones like endocrinologists and other gynecologists. And I was patted on the head and told, you're just getting old, get used to it. Now that was 20 years ago, but I still have patients, believe it or not, that come in today to my office and cry because they've been to five doctors who told them to just get used to it. Well, they can't get used to it because they can't work, they can't think, they can't take care of their kids, they're going to get divorced because they don't want to have sex. It's a big deal. This is huge, and it is being hidden from us. And that is very disturbing. Um, 
testosterone is the hormone to replace during this time to get rid of all of those symptoms. And testosterone loss is the first step in aging. And the minute we start getting these symptoms, we start losing bone, we start losing muscle, we start losing brain tissue. All of these things are what happens as we age, but the trigger is testosterone and we know how to fix it. Unfortunately, we are not being told how to fix it. And except for the patients that find me um, on my website or hear about me from their girlfriends, um, people don't know that there's an answer to this and they're just living with it. Um, in, in general, when we have a, there's a research article about aging, they're really talking about lack of testosterone. Most of them, most of the articles have um, scientists talking about, oh, women age and they put two symptoms together, like women who have a lot of hot flashes have more dementia. Well, you can have hot flashes from low testosterone or low estrogen, and dementia is a disease of aging. So basically they're saying we could substitute the word people who have low testosterone have dementia and have hot flashes. And that means we can fix it. If we just say aging, we are giving <laughs> the, the researcher or the doctor talking to you is just making a wastebasket term, filing you in file 13, see ya, bye, I'm done. That's what they're doing. I mean, either they don't know, and if they don't know, God love them because they should know, or um, they were never taught and they haven't learned anything in the last 30 or 40 years. Um, that's too bad, but that's not, not your fault. Um, but in the wake of this secret, they're, liter they're literally causing the loss of quality of life for millions of women. And the fact that the doctors all have like a, a group they're part of with their specialty, like the American College of OBGYN is mine. And there's an American College of Surgery, and there's American College of Endocrinology. Those colleges promote research. And the research that I read from, from the people who actually take care of menopausal women, gynecology, they don't have anything in there. I have to get my information about menopause from a magazine called Menopause. I mean, from a journal called Menopause, from the New England Journal of Medicine, from the British Journal of Medicine, from the endocrinology journals, that's where I get my information. The American College of OBGYN doesn't research anything that has to do with aging and testosterone. They can call it aging, they may have that, but they're not gonna have anything that has to do with replacing testosterone in women. I have no idea why that is. Um, I've replaced testosterone in women for 20 years, and there's a lot to be said for doctors giving a treatment, and then watching the results of the treatment. Usually I, I've always done that with all of my, uh, everything I did in gynecology, I did that. But now in this practice, I can see quickly, within four months, the difference between a crying, crumpled woman who's lost the desire to live and, and doesn't care if she gets divorced and doesn't want sex, to somebody who has a vibrant life, goes back to work, has a happy husband, and is and she is happy because she feels like her old self. When you see that happen over and over and over and over again all day, and you see that women can get their life back at 40, then you want that, and you want that for everybody. You don't want that for just the people that can find their way to your office. But it's never going to happen until the big dudes at the top of, of medicine actually give women the time of day. And honestly, I don't think that we get the money or the time of day or the research that should be done. And even if the research is done, it is hidden under the word aging. Aging causes this. Aging causes that, which means not treatable. If you, pro if you blame something on that, it's like, oh, the hurricane caused it. Well, you can't fix that. You can't avoid it. You just have to prepare for it. So this is kind of like bad weather. They say, oh, yeah, can't, you know. Aging caused that, I don't have to deal with it. So it's very obvious in my practice that testosterone does fix the symptoms of what happens to us uh, between the ages of 40 and 50. Um, in 2020, for example, of what happens in terms of, of um, manipulation of doctors, um, 
the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism uh, came out with an, a big article in May of 2020. Of course, we were in the middle of the, of the COVID crisis. But uh, they came out with an article that said that um, doctors giving women testosterone were creating a terrible, were giving women a terrible treatment. And they couldn't really state that we were doing anything unhealthy. All they could state was some types of testosterone cause facial hair and acne, and I try to prevent that in my practice. And some types of testosterone, especially oral, can cause women to be uh, anxious, upset, and irritable, but testosterone in pellet form does not do that. So they, but they were basically saying doctors who do this are just out for the money. They're not out to treat people. They're not out to make people better. And they actually named my practice, but they didn't call me and they didn't ask to, to name my practice. I was very offended by that. And I was even more offended when in October of that same year, 2020, they came out with a five-page article that said that women with um, sexual dysfunction should be given testosterone. Now, how does that work? Five months ago, you told us that everybody who gave testosterone to women was, was bad and just after the dollar. And then you say, oh, well, 30% of the population has sexual dysfunction after 40 and I think 40 years old, and I think that it's way higher than that. But if we use 30%, a third of the population of women over that age has sexual dysfunction, and it should be treated. And they agreed with that, but they were treating it with things that weren't testosterone, not, not natural, not replacing it with what you're missing. They were replacing it with all these other kinds of drugs to take care of each little symptom <laughs> instead of testosterone. Sometimes testosterone, but that wasn't their primary treatment. So that is, that is very disturbing in terms of a medical specialty, um, taking other doctors to task. I mean, some, some people who are doctors would be scared to death and stop doing whatever that article told them they should stop doing. But, you know, I'm kind of a renegade, and I've always been a renegade. And I, when I see things that make no sense, I figure out why they don't make sense and try to solve the problem. Well, this doesn't make sense, and you don't probably care. But if you're a woman, you should care because I don't think we get the we get the medical care that we deserve in America. I think most of the money is is subtly and um, subliminally moved to the male side by making us afraid of estrogen, osteoporosis medicine, or testosterone, or something. They use fear to control us, and it actually works in most women. It doesn't work in me. When they do that, and I know something is, has never, one thing has never caused the other, and they say, oh, this is terrible. Well, I've seen thousands and thousands and thousands of women. I know whether that happens or not. And when they give me some information that's absolutely the opposite of what I know, then I have to investigate. So, such as the WHI study, which we talk about all the time, was done in 2001, before I started this practice, which one day didn't come to the doctors at all. It came out in a, in a news, um, I guess it was a press release, and it went to the news. And it said, hormones cause breast cancer and heart disease. Now, I don't want you to remember that, because it really should have said, Provera causes breast cancer and and heart disease, because in this study, and you may have heard me talk about this before, but in this study, they had three groups of women. One group took nothing. One group had a uterus, and they took Provera and Premarin, which is estrogen and Provera. And then another group who'd had hysterectomies just took Premarin. So the real study, if you read it, and it was many pages, said that women who, who took just estrogen, Premarin, had a lower risk of heart disease and a lower risk of um, breast cancer than women who took nothing. So if you're taking nothing, you're at higher risk for those two problems than if you take estrogen. But they didn't put that in the headline. And then they had a nut, the other group that took the Provera and the Premarin had a higher risk of heart disease and a higher risk of um, 
having breast cancer, which every woman is afraid of. So they scared everybody. My patients went off the pill, I went off the birth control pill and off the um, postmenopausal medications in a flash, and they were very upset. They're, they were on our on our recorder. They're screaming, crying. I mean, it was terrible because they really had they really needed these hormones to be normal, and they were miserable without them. So. Basically, what, why would this happen? Well, the NIH is, is, is uh, you know, government su um, supported, and it's also supported by the drug companies. But the government doesn't want to spend Medicare dollars on women. So in that one title of that one article, it slashed the cost of Premarin and Premarin, Provera, Estrace, Estradiol, every kind of estrogen that they spend money on in Medicare. Um, for us, just slash it. It was the number one cost for Medicare. Well, then negotiate down the cost with the drug company because these things have been around forever. Don't take them away from us by making women afraid. So whenever you see an inflammatory headline, you actually need to read what it really says in, in the study. And maybe that study would have been difficult for a non-doctor to read, but the doctor should have read it, but they didn't. They just read the headline. So. Women, again, saved America money by being miserable. And um, that's, you know, both the use of estrogen and the use of testosterone, which they haven't even, uh, medicine hasn't even agreed if we make that hormone, but we know we make that hormone, and all the research we read knows we make that hormone. But the big um, titanic of medicine doesn't agree with that yet. Um, and they say there needs to be more research. Well, I've got thousands of research papers that say that we need testosterone. They're from all over the world. It doesn't have to be paid for and run by the government, uh, our government, but it basically is well known that women need estrogen after menopause and women need testosterone after age 40. So, so some other, many doctors are observant of their patients. They are problem solvers. They look at what they do with their patients. Did it work? A new drug. Did it make them lose weight? It said they were going to lose weight. Did they lose weight? Well, there's like, a, there's a new drug called uh, Ozempic, which I, you know, when I heard about it, I went, yeah, sure. Oh my gosh. I tried it on some patients. It worked beautifully. People we have never been able to get to lose weight. We just couldn't, we couldn't get through their metabolic slowness. Well, it worked. It was, it's a great medication for weight loss and for diabetes and, and those two things together. And oftentimes, if you lose enough weight, you don't have to be treated for, for uh, type 2 diabetes. So that was easy. That was fast. That followed the research. The research was right. It does cause weight loss for people very, um, very effectively. Now, what I see with my patients is that... I'm going to give you the list of symptoms, and they usually have more than five of these. Um, their loss of testosterone causes loss of sex drive and orgasms, uh, painful intercourse, fatigue, obesity, especially around the belly, insomnia, depression, loss of muscle mass and strength, inability to make muscle, even with exercise, migraines, only migraines that start after age 40, Depression and anxiety that starts after age 40, um, irritability, loss of motivation, arthritis, dry eyes, dry skin, um, sagging skin, loss of hair, loss of muscle, uh, sorry I said that before, loss of balance, damage to joints, joint pain, uh, memory loss, and inability to recall certain things like names and, and uh, labeling. Um, increase in the belly fat, increase in cholesterol and inflammation, increase in blood sugar, increase in insulin. Insulin resistance occurs usually between 40 and, and uh, 55. Uh, loss of quality of life and sometimes hot flashes from just low testosterone. There's probably something I missed in there, but that's a lot of symptoms. And we get rid of those with one hormone. Now that's efficiency. I find that to be really great when somebody would come in with five or six drugs that was managing all this, 
And I could get women off statins because their cholesterol would come down and they didn't, and their, in, their inflammation went down. So their risk of heart disease went down. Plus I'm giving them estrogen and testosterone if they're menopausal. And that's helping their, that's helping decrease their risk of heart disease. Um, no estrogen doesn't cause breast cancer because we've already proven it with the WHI study. It was the Provera in the, in the study that is a progestin, not progesterone, progestin that we have used for many years and is very, is in effect, in fact, dangerous and shouldn't be used. They should be using, um, in both birth control pills and postmenopausal hormone replacement, they should use, uh, an estradiol and a progesterone in oil to solve the problems. So why can't the studies say, instead of aging, testosterone treats blank, 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 and testosterone resolves the issues of blank, 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 blank after 40. And instead of saying aging, which is not going to have an answer. Um, I don't know why no one else seems to be screaming this at the top of their lungs. I've been treated, I treat the people that I can, I mean, I treat as many people as I can, but our future in aging, now that we know all this, should not be to go become 40, be miserable for 10 years, and then be more miserable after menopause when we don't have any estrogen, and then we start getting autoimmune diseases, and we start getting heart disease, and we start getting... Um, all kinds of cancers because our immune system tanks when we don't have testosterone. We say, oh, your immune system went down because of aging. Well, my patients had very few severe COVID problems during the time that we were uh, in lockdown and after. Um, they, in general, if they've been on testosterone for a year, really did great with COVID, either didn't get it or um, they didn't have a severe COVID uh, reaction. But can I get anybody to believe that? <laughs> I hope you do, because that's, um, you know, Girl Scout promise. That's, I, that's what we have seen. So if you're not getting what you need and no one's listening to you, <laughs> write letters, march on Washington, march on the FDA and the NIH. I mean, this is a big deal. We're just being thrown aside and they're making very expensive drugs for all kinds of things that would be treated with, and dangerous drugs, that would be treated with a hormone that is not dangerous and is our own hormone. We're just getting it back. So simple. It only takes a few synapses to go from, oh, you're losing it. Oh, you got all these, you lost your testosterone. You're getting all these symptoms. Okay. We're going to replace it, see what happens. And they all go away. Now that is an efficient kind of medicine. And that's the kind of medicine I really like. So you should be as mad about this as I am if you're a female or if you love a female or if you have a mother or a daughter or a wife or a sister because we are not being treated like we should be treated and we should be equal to men in terms of medical care. They shouldn't be saving money on us. So thank you very much for listening. I'm not trying to be political. I'm just trying to have our rights preserved. See you next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.